Hey guys, Spartan 117GW here, and today we're going to be going over my Operation Gothic Serpent Delta Force loadout. Now, the loadout is famous, uh, particularly because of the movie Black Hawk Down, as well as the book, uh, from the Battle of Mogadishu. Now, uh, going to be dropping in some knowledge bombs here today, and we're going to be going over the gear and the weapons. So first, let's give you a little bit of an intro of what the whole situation was like, and a little bit of knowledge about the gear. So first things first, let's get you familiar with the situation. It's 1993, Operation Restore Hope has ended. They are now in Operation Gothic Serpent, which they're going after Mohammed Faradid's lieutenants. Um, more or less, basically doing daytime raids um, and, or raids at night, um, preferably raids at night. And you kind of see that idea taken to a whole new level in like places like Iraq or Afghanistan. Uh, but this is kind of when they start really implementing it in, the, in that era. And one thing that you see is that um, basically Task Force Ranger, which consists of um, Delta Force, the 75th Ranger Regiment, and a couple other members of the Special Operations Committee, including some SEALs, um, they ended up going in there uh, during Operation Irene. They completed their mission, but at fairly heavy losses for today's standards. Um, they were able to recover the people that they went after, of course, two birds went down. They had Michael Durant became a prisoner of war for a period of time until they recovered him. Uh, and of course, that kind of set the tone for the future of warfare, both what urban warfare or mount was going to be like for um, the U.S. forces in the Middle East, and also kind of um, U.S. foreign policy in terms of what kind of losses were acceptable to the United States and specifically the Clinton administration. Now, even though they completed their mission and even though they were denied a lot of the assets that they had asked for, uh, the Clinton administration had ended up pulling out Task Force Ranger and U.S. presence out of Somalia, um, thereby basically kind of basically making the mission nullified or you know, what was the point, more or less. Um, so a lot of guys from that era are not really too happy with the Clinton administration about that. And that, and it also told the enemy that if you just kill a few of our guys, that we'll just go back, run away, and run home. So, you know, the next time there's the next real war and guys are dying, uh, people are dying by the thousands, you know, what's America supposed to think? So America's standard for warfare has almost been so high that any losses were almost unacceptable. I think that's one thing that the military has to kind of teach the American populace is that, you know, when you go to war, people are going to die. You know, it's one of those things. So that, that kind of gives you some background uh, around the situation in Somalia and specifically in Mogadishu. Now, what's really cool about this kit is obviously it's made super famous by the book and the movie Black Hawk Down. Um, it's very iconic. It's really cool. You have the DCUs, the black gear, um, and there are some differences between what you see in the movie and what you see in real life. Now, with the Rangers, they got that pretty spot on, but with Delta, there's a lot more nuances with the gear. Um, starting off with the headpiece, I was lucky enough to get a real period correct white foam pro tech in the old style cut and the old style like shell and molding and everything um, you have to make sure you sand it down a little bit to get rid of some of the gloss i put some velcro on there i've got my old school strobe on there i have my old school anvis pack which was kind of a pain in the butt to track down might see a couple of those on ebay here and there um, also have my anvis mount on the front there's quite a few variations one thing that's really cool is if you look at the reference photos of what delta guys were wearing both on the on their chest and on their head just in general with everything there's different variations guys were super tacked out some guys didn't even bother wearing knee pads and stuff like that and some guys even had simpler setups for their helmets um, but what's really cool too is I also have a Setcom 5 uh, headset and that's just one of the variations. Delta was using quite a, quite a variety of different comms pieces and other you know, stuff that they were using on their, uh, on their head. I also have Bully goggles. Now these are close but might, might not be ex the exact Bully X500s. There's a couple few versions out there that might get you by. Uh, but the correct one is very similar to this, but still has the white lining on the inside. So still working to track that down, but it is definitely close enough. When it comes to the vest, now my buddy Stan, uh, he's a Russian. Um, he basically makes old school gear. There's a lot of this gear you can't find anywhere else. Short of finding a real Vost vest, um, yeah, good luck. Um, so Stan makes a lot of this gear. He does a really fantastic job. 
Um, I can't recommend him enough. Uh, he basically makes the uh, Delta Force Rigor Modified Fosts. He makes the belts. He makes the charge bag, which goes on the left side. Well, that's typically how I run it. He makes the holsters. He makes the 1911 pouches that you can get as well. And he also even makes a little backpack that goes in the back of the Fost. Now, what's really cool about the Fost is that it has clips built in, kind of a vest that's ahead of its time. Because when paired with the AWS Strike uh, chest rig, and the one I have is from Toy Soldier, but I believe Stan made makes one as well. Those are kind of the two sources where you can get them from other or find a real one. Um, first, second gen ones, and OD is also kosher as well. Uh, what's really cool is that the chest rig will buckle straight in. As you can see, I have a radio on here, which is a Motorola X350, uh, super old school. I mean, this thing is, is ancient. I uh, also have my M4 mags up, up, up front, my Stan eggs uh, with the 550 and uh, 100 mile an hour tape loops on there. Uh, pretty straightforward. You can also put your M9, uh, 1911 mags in here as well. One thing I don't have that the Delta guys really, really loved was their flashbangs and their smokes. Those things were everywhere. They would loop them on the vest. They would loop them on the mags. Always got to have your flashbangs if you're clearing rooms and stuff like that. The Fost vest, definitely when you look at it, it was definitely ahead of its time because, you know, guys didn't run systems similar to this where the chest were clipped in, at least on the standard infantry level until like the mid to late 2000s. So, you know, you can really see how far ahead they were. Um, you also have some... Um, uh, cool Velcro space for the flag and stuff like that. Also the RAID uh, DCUs too. Uh, this is back when the RAID stuff was still pretty new and you can see Delta Force had some interesting style pockets. They put their blood types on there. Sometimes they put them on their cuffs, knee pads, boots. Um, when it comes to knee pads, some guys didn't wear them, some guys did. There's the Bike USA ones, which I'm trying to track down, which look like the most comfortable and the most functional. Then there's the standard Alta knee pads. Now mine are close. They're not the exact Alta knee pads, but they look great for pictures and stuff. Chances are when I'm actually playing, I probably won't use those or I'll use bike or something better. Um, you also have standard desert boots. Now, Delta was issued Adidas GSG-9s, but in real life, for the most part, in Mogadishu, they were wearing desert boots. So that's one of the things the movies changed up. Um, standard DCU uh, clothing for the most part, with the exception of the raid top. Big differences that in the movie they had PT armor, in the movie they also had different Alice gear and stuff like that. Um, kind of rigged on there and they had, you know, Blackhawk kind of sponsored the movie. So there's Blackhawk gear all over that film. Uh, but other than that, the, the essence of what they were wearing was close. Um, one thing too um, I want to mention is that um, there's all kinds of cool little nuances and mods. You really got to look at the reference photos and you'll see a lot of different stuff with the gear, uh, especially the uh, belt systems. They had, uh, I believe, Farland 3004 holster for 1911 was one of the more popular ones. And you also have um, you know, the, the belt setups. It's pretty crazy. I'll show, some, show you some uh, different variants on that. All right, next we're gonna go over this baby. Uh, now this isn't exact, it's my mock-up version of an M723, which is the correct rifle used by Delta Force at the time. Um, this was an XM177 from Class Scarmy. The main differences are the uh, forward assist and the lack of a um, deflector right there. But other than that, it's pretty close. Has the standard uh, CAR-15 style stock. I got my 550 cord loop here with my Colt sling. Um, this mod is actually super handy. This rubber band mod keeps the uh, stock in place from accidental uh, um, manipulation right here is super super cool. Uh, I do need to change the, a uh, the AR grip to something more standardized or, uh, or a little bit more um, along the line of the evolutions of the ARs and M4s and stuff like that. Um, you have your standard A2 sight post, and that's the tricky thing, is that the M723 has an A1 rear and an A2 front. Also changed it out to a M4 profile uh, barrel. Um, you can get the pencil barrel, but that's uh, kind of a little like an earlier version of the M723. So to here or there, which one you want to do, but I kind of went with the ones that for most of the pictures, what you guys see in Mogadishu are running M4 profile barrels. Uh, also have this light here. I believe this is a kit of a 6P. It's close. I don't know if it's exact because it looks a little big, but it's pretty pretty damn close. The the mount, I'm not sure if it's 100% accurate. And the pick braille, I just have bolted into the bottom of this um, you know, handguard up here. But the overall front end looks relatively close, but the Surefire 6P, believe so, is the correct light that you need. Now, one thing that's really cool um, is I also have a ready mag system on this rifle. Um, it's pretty cool because, uh, you know, it's kind of cool to see what Delta's running at the time. They loved their different mag carrying systems. And as you can see, the ready mag, like so, super badass because when you press the mag release, it drops both mags. So 
if you uh, want to do a reload, you would drop one mag and, and then just insert that mag like so. So, pretty cool. Pretty cool system, kind of heads time, kind of ahead of what guys were doing at the time on the infantry level. Um, one thing that's on here that's pretty much the crown jewel, uh, the, the baby here, is the Aimpoint 3000 right here. This thing is amazing. This is a real one that I tracked down with, I hope is the correct accurate mount. The mount's pretty good, it's pretty close, it's pretty true to what the guys would have in the 90s. Uh, but this thing's great and it works. Uh, so, I mean, when it comes to the gun, that's kind of like the thing that makes it really complete. Uh, and I absolutely love this thing, the M723. You just gotta find it on eBay. Uh, and also, if you plan on playing airsoft with it, definitely wanna put something to cover the front so you don't shoot this thing out. But, I mean, it is absolutely a beauty. Really love this gun, how it turned out. Uh, right now, it's kind of more configured for cosplay, but I will be getting it upgraded and doing some things and juicing it up so I can use it for airsoft as well. But this rifle is good to go, and I'm absolutely in love with it. Uh, but yeah, the, the loadout itself, the rifles and everything, super fantastic. Um, there's a couple other companies that make rifles that might be a little bit more uh, realistic or accurate to the M723, but that's kind of what I found with my solution-wise. Um, but uh, yeah, the loadout is pretty impressive. One of my more favorite loadouts, I really want to get a task force put together. I have a C Squadron Facebook group, if one of you guys wants to join it and kind of put your Gothic Serpent loadout together. Uh, we have Stan in there, and as, he, as I said before, he's a great reference for gear and information. And uh, we're hoping to hit up some events one of these days and really rock all these kits together because, you know, let's face it, it's pretty badass. When it comes to impressions, this is probably one of the most uh, badass impressions that you can possibly do. One, because of the unit, and also two, because it's kind of old school now. I mean, it's like 25 years uh, plus, you know, since um, the Battle of Mogadishu. So the gear is getting harder to find, but uh, if you do find it, it's definitely really, really cool. So I'll leave a bunch of reference photos for you guys to look at and check out. Thank you guys for watching. Um, like I said, big shout out to Stan and make sure you hit up C Squadron. Also check out some videos that we did with Airsoft GI, talking about this kit, talking about this gun. Um, super happy that they wanted to check out the impressions and uh, really cool that Classic Army uh, let me check this baby out so I can deck it out and give you something that's pretty close to the M723. So thank you guys for watching. This is Spartan 117GW. I'll see you guys next time.